Welcome back, everybody, to our next episode. This is number 31 in our series, Playing Crusader Kings 3. It is 1315, which means we have been playing the game for about 250 years of game time, and we've got about 140 or so to go. Uh, before we get to the end of this game and we move this into Europa Universalis 4. So I am the Empire, Emperor of Britannia and we're looking toward expanding our realm now on the European continent. Uh, we do have those couple of Norwegian lands up here as well as Inner Hebrides that at some point I will deal with. But for now, it's really not a big concern. What is of concern is uh, trying to gain some more counties for myself so I can get the income from those counties uh, and I'm only holding two right now so there's a lot of different ways we can get some but right now I'm mostly just thinking about further expansion since I've raised my crown authority I do have the ability to revoke titles uh, I'm looking specifically at the Queen of Brittany who I conquered recently uh, and I'm looking at some of her territories and there's a lot of income there so I feel like maybe that's the place to go but it It'll cause a lot of opinion loss with her, so I don't care about that so much, but it will. Uh, it's only 16 opinion by each of my vassals, which isn't bad because I've actually got a very positive relationship with most of my vassals. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm just looking to see which one gives me the best income. I guess it's probably going to be Leon. She will not accept, so she's going to rise in rebellion with other disgruntled vassals if I do that. Uh, I guess we'll just kind of hold off until we have an excuse to take from someone. Oh, my mother died of old age, so she was 66 years old. I am 50... Wait a second. Oh, that's the king of France. I'm like, wait, I'm not 54. I'm 47. So she was a teenager when she had me. She died on Christmas Day. So I've got uh, my brother, who's the king of Ireland. My sister, who's actually in jail right now. Uh, another sister who's in Dublin, my king, uh, my brother, the King of Wales, my brother, the Prince of Britannia, who's the Duke of Strathclyde, uh, and then a sister here who's 20, uh, which makes her younger than my son, who's 22. And I'm just looking at my other sons. I've got a two-year-old and then a daughter who's newly born. My 14-year-old daughter, I have not betrothed to anyone yet. We've got a I got Georgia again, but that doesn't necessarily do me a lot of good. Uh, Poitou, that might be good. Here's a, a Breton king here, or a prince. Matrilineal? Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to set, set, set about starting to change the culture uh, of my various realms to Anglo-Saxon. Well, actually, most of my culture is English at this point. We only have a few that are Anglo-Saxon, but we're going to try to spread the Anglo-Saxon culture to Brittany. All right, we don't have the, the ability yet to force France into vassalization, though he has a very small army, and it would be wonderful to be able to do that because he has no allies. Uh, so that's not an option. So what we've got to do instead is we've got to start going after counties and we're going to start with Anjou that's the county from which the Plantagenet dynasty came uh, for the kings of England historically so I'm looking at the count of Anjou and I don't think we just can just kind of force him to become a part of our kingdom um, so we're going to have to get a claim on that instead we've got to take away enough counties from France to where we can force him into vassalization so I'm actually going to get away from my uh, work on converting the culture in Leon because I want to build up the development level in Cambridgeshire. If I get it up to 40, it's 37 right now. If I get it up to 40, I should be able to build Cambridge University. Uh, a feast? Uh, yeah, we'll come, Duke. I've got a pretty good relationship with most of my vassals these days. You can see that here. Don't really have. Ah, uh, looks like the Queen of Brittany. Even she's kind of softened to me, though. All 
All right, we have completed the fabrication of a claim on the county of Anjou. Uh, it gives us an excuse to go to war over that. Obviously, it's going to be a war with France, who has very little in the way of an army. And we've got plenty of money with which to do this. So we're going to go after my claim on Anjou. We've got our rally point ready to go. How much is the local army going to be? Uh, the local levies would be 18,000. Dang. Well, I guess that's everybody. So we really don't need that many. Super expensive to keep them all going. So i um, just going to look at the different armies that we've got. This one's the low quality army. So we're going to disband that force. We're going to disband this force. And then we're going to use this army here to deal with things. And that keeps us on the positive side in terms of income. Call a dynasty member to war. Uh, really not necessary, but we'll do it. It'll cost us 75 renown. I'd rather hang on to the renown. Okay, we've got another point available to us to spend. Eventually we'll get down here and we can get Accomplished Forger, which is actually pretty good because it allows you to fabricate titles a lot faster. Right now we're just laying siege to Angers. I could assault. I don't know how quickly that would finish things. Duke Richard is plotting against me. Richard the Bully, with whom I have the perfect relationship? Well, that's disappointing. Really, no chance I'm going to review... Man, he's got... That's why he's so powerful. Look how many territories he controls. Doesn't look like he's likely to accept anything. We may have to go to war with him. The cocky fiend. I doubt I can imprison him. Oh, it's a murder. I don't need a... I don't want to murder him. I want to imprison him. Only 12% chance that'll happen. Alright, we may have to go to war with him, but then we can grab all those titles if that happens. Alright, we're going to go ahead and assault this fort. Actually, I'm going to wait until this next siege event's done. Because we, we're only gaining three points a day on the siege. I'm trying to make it happen sooner. This will gain 14 points on the siege, but cost us 70 casualties a day. But that's something we can afford right now because the French aren't even attempting to fight me. Like, they haven't even raised their army. That only gave us 12%, though, so we're going to have to conquer a whole lot more French territory, I'm afraid. How about we go right for Paris? Okay, so my daughter can marry Prince Mikhail of Georgia which is going to be a matrilineal marriage, which means we will have him in our house. The slaughter at Ile de France. It was just a couple of knights that came out and went all Leroy Jenkins on us. All right, this is gonna take quite a while. Literally, as I was about to take Paris, I mean, it was like three days away, the French raised their army long enough to fight me and then took it down again, and they raised 9,000 men. So uh, that got a whole lot more interesting. So now we've got to raise the rest of the army. And we've got to go deal with him. You can see there his army. He's raised it again. So we're going to put ours together. We're going to come after him. He has angered me greatly. And now we're going to call our allies. I'm going to call the Byzantine Empire. It's going to cost me 750 prestige. Oh, I don't have that much. All right, so maybe we're not going to do that. All right, we'll do this ourselves for now. So the King of France just went across the channel, and he's laying siege to Sussex. We'll let him have it. I'm going after Paris. Let me see who's in that army, if I can. No, I can't. Not quite yet, anyway. 
But maybe we can take the uh, take the King of France if he's present. My wife is pregnant again? How is that even possible? She's Well, she's 43. I guess it's possible. My brother, Prince Elfstan, was taken prisoner by my vassal, Duke Richard. So Richard's the guy that we're after when this war is over, if I can afford it. He's about to win his siege there, but I'm hoping he'll come after me after that. The queen might join the Britannic claim on the county of Anjou as an enemy. Well now. That's my vassal who did that. For which we could probably revoke her title. If she goes to war, I will revoke it. What kind of an army does she have? 7,000. Ooh, boy. Okay. All right. I had to go ahead and call the Byzantines to the war. Boy, all of this over Anjou. <laughs> Was not expecting that. And here they come. Wait, that's Aachen. That's not even our friends, is it? No, because Aachen's a Holy Roman Emperor. Who's he going to war with? Aquitaine? It looks like it. This whole world's going to get divided amongst these couple of empires. All right, we took France, or took Paris. I took the king's son and heir hostage. That certainly turns things back in my direction. we got to keep an eye on the uh, expenses, though. And we're going to go ahead, see if we can go over and deal with the main French army. It's going to cost us some money to get across the channel. Go ahead and speed things up a little bit. Uh, so my, my wife lost the child. Alright, we lost a lot of men crossing the channel. That's going to be a lot closer battle than I was expecting. The Battle of Hastings with a, a French army defending and the British army crossing the channel to attack it. Well, it's like the reverse Hastings. And he's going to win. Oh. He's going to win because I lost those men coming across and he gained a huge advantage. And he's sending another one across now. Our knight, King Adred, was slain by Duke Nicholas IV. That's my, that's my brother. Wow. Boy, being an empire has not been easy so far at all. Dang, that was brutal. So let's take a look at that battle because that that was ugly at Hastings. So several of my knights were captured there. Duke Richard the Bully, the guy that's after me, was fighting for me. King Adred of Wales, my brother, was killed. Uh, Duke William of Essex. Uh, he only killed two. Duke Oswulf of Lancaster. So pretty much all of my nobles were there. Which, I mean, that's historical. You look at some of the battles of this time period and you see multiple nobles getting killed in them during the fighting. They were right there on the front lines. So we need a new steward. Oh, that was, that was really brutal. All right, we're going to need the Byzantines to come to the rescue again. All of this over Anjou. Maybe that was a mistake to try and expand so much. Now I have a bunch of prisoners myself. And some of these I'll go ahead and ransom just because they're kind of low-level folks. I don't think I want my son commanding this army. I do not need to lose my son and heir. So we're going to switch out the commander. Maybe I'll take the lead myself. King Swain of Scotland. We'll let him lead the army.
Did the French army leave? It looks like they did. I don't know what's going on here. Looks like some inter intervassal rivalry going on. We're going to go start taking some of our territory back. And here comes the armies of Constantinople. Can always count on those faithful allies from the Byzantine Empire. And they'll help me out and eventually we'll win this thing. We just got to hope we have money left when it happens. Let's ransom some more low-level prisoners here. Okay, we're heading for a showdown with the French army. And he's running. We've got the armies of Constantinople with us. See if we can catch up to Oh, they're going to run off the continent. All right. Well, we'll take our territory back then. Boy, this is a crazy expensive war. This is not going to be worth it. All right. Well, he did, he did stay. He just kind of started going off the coast and then came back. So we're still trying to pursue this French army. If we can capture the king. Here we go. We're going to get our showdown. He's got the numbers. And it's going at a disadvantage for us, too. Ugh. We can't beat this French army. And we're not going to get the reinforcements from Constantinople in time. Alright. This has been a disastrous war. If I surrender, what happens? I lose my claim on Anjou. I pay a ton of money. Oh, I got to do it. All right, well, that was disastrous financially. We can ask the Pope for some gold to at least get us closer to back to zero. And this prince that we want her to marry is behind bars at the moment. Well then, my sister Aylesworth has, been, has given birth to two sons. Since they're part of the Green Hill Dynasty, they should get blessed with good names. All right, so obviously you have to name one Edward. And we'll name the other one. What's a name we have? Uh, we'll name him after the father. We'll give kind of a nice little mix here, Mikhail. They can carry on both traditions. All right, we've got another perk available. Accomplished Forger. Fabricate Claymont County. Speed 75%. Not that we're in the mood to do that again anytime soon. So we are at war. We were called by Mikhail's family. Uh, but it looks like they're going to be just fine. They've got 33,000 against 6,000 in that war. So hopefully they'll win fast enough that it doesn't require me to get involved. Oh hey, by the way, we did automatically grab the Inner Hebrides. I guess uh, we were able to force that vassalization without any trouble. Or it looks like one of my vassals forced that vassalization under them. Alright, what's going on with these factions? Let's take a look. So we've got two factions. Irish Orthodox Populists. They don't have nearly the power to do anything. Uh, Liberty Faction as well. They don't have it either. The King of Scotland's involved in that. The only person I need to worry about is the Duke of Northumbria, Duke Richard the Bully. He's got 26,000 men between himself and his allies. So that's obviously a big concern if it ever comes to that. And it looks like the war I'm involved in is going our way. It wasn't initially. We're just going to keep saving up money right now. And it looks like that alliance just ended anyway. Oh, no, that's a different alliance. Okay, so we are going to gain the perk, or the trait Diplomat. I guess we can continue working on something else now. I'm not sure what. How about Family Focus? It looks like as soon as we hit Exalted Among Men in Prestige, which 
we're very, very close to, we should be able to build the University of Cambridge. We'll take a look and see if that happens. Okay, we've gained a level of fame, and now we have the ability to found the University of Cambridge. A new age of knowledge is upon us. I have met with a steady stream of builders and scholars, and the plans for the magnificent university are taking form. The buildmaster informs me that the bricks for the university are ready to be laid, and all that rem remains is to be decided is a location and the name. We will found the University of Cambridge. We get a special building slot. Earl Lionel gets 30 opinion of me. I get the nickname, The Scholar. All right, very cool. So I don't know if that adds any special benefits to us when we have a university. I guess we'll find out. Let's go ahead and start constructing that. So it'll give us development growth, learning per level of fame, renown, and monthly lifestyle experience. All right, start constructing. Three years. My daughter Elizabeth is of age. She's a rational villain. And uh, I'm going to look for somebody that's got really high skill. Uh, what, let's take a look at my council for a second. Although I, I don't know if by marrying them if, if she will go off there or not. Actually, our council's decent. We could use a better chancellor. How about this guy here? She'll lose some prestige for that. Okay, so we're going to make Uther, my new son-in-law, uh, the chancellor now. That's going to not make Duchess Eleanor of Kent very happy. And this is kind of an interesting thing that happened in history because occasionally you would have this happen where somebody very skilled would get named to a position. You know, I think of someone like Thomas Cromwell, who was a pretty low-born guy that was raised to a very elevated position in Henry VIII's government uh, on his council, and the men of noble birth resented that and eventually turned against him. So uh, Uther is my son-in-law, though, and we're going to make him the chancellor because he's got a much better skill in that area. All right, so we're going to wrap this up right there. A lot happened, most of it not so good. Uh, but in the end, we do have a little bit more territory under our belt than we did before. We've got a nice amount of money going our way. And we have founded the University of Cambridge. So some good things did happen despite that disastrous war with France. It's 1330, and we will see you again with an, uh, another episode in a couple of days. Thanks for watching.